scene is set for a great game at Milner Street at Richmond with Peter Carey playing his 318th game. He was the man that tapped the ball down. Also has won the toss and kicking the way that John McFarlane does at the moment. To the south end with a breeze worth about three or four goals. At the back is Ross Gibbs. Gets it on quickly. The front spot, the Wolves defence really pack up. Back comes Gibbs again. Nothing can be done. An umpire, Rick Kinnear, together with Laurie Argent, in control of the game today. The conditions fine. Perhaps the ground a little heavy after last night's rain, but the day itself fine. A little bit of sunshine and the breeze on your screen left to right as Grosser taps it forward to Lamb and will clear. The hand pass good to Gibbs and he looks good as he bolts with one bounce. The second to centre wing, the long hand pass to Randy Bennett, trying to get past McGuinness, can't do so. Did it beautifully was Lamb though, round to Herbert. He goes long, short, beautifully done. And the new full forward for the Wolves is Johnny Faulting. Luders out through injury, a, a bruised kidney. The drop punt to the square. A huge pack of players. Randy Bennett at the bottom of the left foot. He's got the chance. He pops it up. But the breeze, look at it hold as Johnny McFarlane with the catch and the mark is allowed. <coughs> John McFarlane, the oldest man on the, on the field, down towards the centre of the ground. Alan Stringer for a chance. Over to Herbert. Herbert will go wide looking for Bennett. He had the opportunity of just a short time ago to score for the first time. Brought down, the umpire let's play goes on, steadies, aims for Faulting, he's on the lead, Faulting goes up, cannot take the mark, here's a chance though, players going through, it's Burgess went for the handball, the ball lost again, it's down on the deck, over the top they go, and we'll see it cleared straight out of the goal square, Gee, that was almost inexcusable, that was even more inexcusable by Ryan, as he had a deliberate shot for goal as you can see, and uh, the ball just stayed at his feet, but the free kick coming out of it. What's well, this? This will be a memorial kick for this youngster, only 20 years of age. That's his first kick that he doesn't have. That's called the Clayton's kick, the kick you have when you don't have a kick. And then a shuffle again. Got the opportunity now, lining up, going in towards the northern goal against the breeze. Every goal this end would be most valuable. And that's the first one on the board to West Adelaide. One goal up, and Glenelg get the score. Carey and Big Mark Mecken. All Carey with a roundhouse right. Slams it towards Greg Summerton. In comes Kernahan. Tries to get it out. The brothers too playing today, of course. Stephen and also David Kernahan. At the bottom, 38, is Stephen Talbot. Short Herbert. Inside the square. Beautifully done to Filkey. He'll look long and low. Can't quite do it. This man always oh, lost his footing, can't quite get to it. That's uh, Bradley Ryan. The hand pass by McFarlane to Carey. Short, beautifully done. Tony Simons. A longer hand pass, very effective to Leon 12th tree. He'll come round to the left foot. The professional free was given, but he plays on. The balance lost, but the kick is good. And this young man is Robert Kidney. Kicking with the breeze in the reserves. Uh, both sides kick prodigious distances to the right-hand side of your screen, which is the south end of Richmond Oval, and that's a beautifully placed goal, and that is the first of the Tigers at the four-minute mark of the first term. Score, one goal each. Big fellows fly, one goal each in the first quarter. Tried to shovel out, it goes towards the half-forward area. It's going to be a free kick 
to come out. The handball goes over to Kernahan. He took it from Talbot. Wide. That's from uh, the brother of Kernahan. That's David Kernahan down towards his brother in Stephen. They've lost the ball, however. A chance now for West Adelaide to get it clear, which they've done. Their aim towards the centre half forward position. Ball dropping short. Ryan goes for the handball. It wasn't Ryan. It was Burton, also a newcomer into the team. Towards the full forward area. Doozy's there. McFarlane. Pack of players. Quick kick out. The umpire said advantage free downfield. Here's a chance, McDermott, McGuinness, McGuinness looking in towards the centre, told it as the player that he's aiming for, can he get it? Miss uh, Red badly, a handball goes out, Kidney has got the chance, slipping and sliding, but it's a handball again, 12-3, always dangerous on that half-forward line, lines up, shoots for goal, one point only, first minor score of the game, Glenelg 1-1, West Adelaide 1 goal, they're on six points. And to give you some idea of the uh, breeze, there it is uh, on the flags on top of the scoreboard, certainly favouring that southern end of the Richmond ground. Peter Winter, wide looking for McKinnon, can't find him to ground a player grab while not in possession. There he is, but uh, this time the advantage free not paid. Ross Gibbs, there he is, centre screen, the player infringed on. And also Tony Simon's in trouble just to the right hand side of of uh, Ross Gibbs. He's the wingman that the Tigers could not afford to lose. Gibbs kick carrying with the breeze to the square over the top of everyone for a point. So Glenelg, one two, Westies, one goal, six minutes gone, first term. The kick off wide, Herbert. <coughs> Covering a lot of distance over in front of the scoreboard, out of sight of the ground. He's kicked towards the centre wing. Players right here. That's a well judged mark by young Wiedemann. He looks a little a bit like father there on that shot as well. As he aims towards the half forward flank, punched away. The ball very close to the line as McKinnon keeping it in play further afield. Here's a chance with the handball. Comes over in the direction of Filkey. Can't quite control it. Eventually does. Gets the handball to Morris. Morris has got a chance to aim it towards the right forward pocket. McFarland's in there, slow motion stuff at the moment, as eventually Ryan gets it, just casually has a chance to kick. Russell's in there, in that back pocket position. His kick will go towards the outer side. The mark is taken, and Glenelg work their way out of that back line again. Down towards centre wing. One-on-one -on -one battle over running. It was Alan Stringer playing his 50th. Here's Williams. Short with a left foot. Good touch, wrong jumper. And Wiedemann, uh, who was in an incident with Stephen Clifford last week, has decided to carry on with it. Look at the body go in there. Very strongly with that body tackle. Good stuff. At centre wing. The drop punt. Long and low. At the top, slam forward, then well by Richard Hamilton and a pack of players, and we must see a bounce. The wind, a deciding factor in scoring end to end. And Kernahan this time from half forward. Williams, Williams and Kernahan, what a battle that will be. Grosser in strongly over the top. McKinnon attempts the steal, can't do it. That's a high tackle on Jeffrey Morris. A 200 gamer. Or is this McKinnon? Yes, it is. He'll go long and low into the breeze. That's a penetrating oh. kick. The use of the body is not good. And Dennis Russell will kick long. The man he's after will be Kernahan. He's got the drop on the ball. Straight through the hands. At the back is Leon 12th tree. But uh, an infringement is for Greg Summerton. And he's on the halfback flank. To Filkey. Centre wing too slow. Leon 12th tree really charged the player then. Got the ball, put it down, but the kick is not well directed. Johnny Cantle after us. Use of the body again. Strong stuff by Chris McDermott. Over the line, in the forward pocket. Score one, two, the Tigers. One, the Wolves, one straight goal. And we've played nine minutes first term. It's going to be Kernahan, goes for the tap, goes straight over the back to McGuinness. He went nowhere, back into the pack. The umpire indicating is a free kick. And boy, they're picking some free kicks out very early in the piece. What's the plan? If they stick to that all day, well, it's going to uh, show who's boss out there on the field. Very vital encounter for both these teams. 
Players rise. It was Carey getting the tap away. Morris couldn't control it. He goes back after it. Handballs to Filkey. And the Bloods are on their way again towards the left half forward flank. Russell against his immediate opponent in Burton. The ball at the feet of the pack. Taken by Wiedemann. High in the air. It'll be over the line on the full. And the free kick will go Seabalm's way. Seabalm's had a wonderful season for the Tigers. Number 31. You can see him on your screen now. Carey is trying to get it. He goes through uh, the hands. A handball does come out now. Finds Simon. Streaks away. He took that from Stringer. It was Alan Stringer. A long run in towards the goals. The ball is on its way. And he's pumped it straight through the centre. A magnificent solo effort. And a goal to Glenelg. Their second. They're on 2-2 to one goal. What a beautiful movement then from Tony Simon. Stephen Copping had made a lead from the goal square, but he signalled the youngster to kick long, and that's exactly what he did, and split the centre, a perfectly placed kick with this breeze, and the Tigers 2-2, West Adelaide one goal. So Carey, and Mark Micken. Mark Micken actually being beaten at the moment inside that square. Struggling inside. Look at that uh, ground. It is damp underfoot. There has been some rain um, right through the night. The day, however, fine. The shadows on the ground. Micken from the back this time. Slapped it forward. Again the tap forward, but the desperate defence of the Tigers. Down towards half forward. All oh, clean bowls. Williams. Greg Summerton is there. Johnny Candle after his backs his judgment. Did it brilliantly. The back pocket player. Puts it out wide. Herbert the man he's after. Also Lamb, survives well, Randy Bennett. High, wide and swinging away and overcomes Stringer. Micken in strife, Morris, 200 gamer, congratulations, great skill from that player. Bennett, forwarded, almost the chance. Got it. Does come to uh, John Faulting, he'll play on straight away. <coughs> and the ball to ground. Beautifully done, Scott Salisbury. He puts it out wide. Filkey and Simons, what a terrific battle that will be today from centre wing clears. Going to be Kernahan, goes high with the mark, immediately looks to play on, has got McGuinness, aims in that direction. Oh, McGuinness has had, but he's got the chance to get it through. Follows it up the little fellow, a terrier over the top of the ball. Pack develops, the umpire moves in. There'll be plenty of action here at the Richmond ground today. We've been playing now just on 12 and a half minutes, first quarter. Glenelg 2-2-14, two, two, West Adelaide one goal straight. Glenelg with the breeze. Kernahan, a big thump out. Hamilton leads for the run, picks it up. He's grabbed by McDermott. Not going anywhere. It goes back into the pack again. Pack about 30 metres out. Hamilton desperately trying to get the ball away. The umpire letting plenty go now, but eventually moves in. It will be a bounce down on the half-forward position for Glenelg. They're kicking with the breeze, southern end. Up they go. There's an infringement in there. The free kick going Bennett's way. Interference by Kernahan. He casually looks towards the outer side of the ground. Gee, it's been chipped off. Kidney's in there. The pass was intended, but it didn't come off. And Kidney well within kicking distance with this breeze. By, not behind him, but with the advantage of the breeze. Certainly worth three goals towards the southern end. He drops it right into the goal square. The goal umpire standing, players rise, could be touched through. The umpire indicates it is a minor score. So it's 2-3, Glenelg, they're on 15 points. West Adelaide, one goal, been playing 13 three-quarter minutes, first quarter. Peter Winter now kicks to the defensive side. Carey, Micken, all casually one hand, a brilliant piece of uh, marking from his half-back flank. A left foot, McKinnon, and that is a top mark too. Be carefully guarded uh, is David Kernahan, younger brother of Stephen. He's 19 uh, next Wednesday, as a matter of fact, and uh, he's oh. kicking long and low, and a player riding over the top. And of course, the obvious has happened. Mr. Stephen, elastic arms copping. Casually kicked a lazy 11 goals last uh, week, so let's see whether he's lost some accuracy over the last seven days. His first. And I've put the mockers on him for one point. So two for the Tigers. Wolves one goal at the 14-minute mark first term. 
Peter Witter kicking off again towards that outer side. Micken will be his target. A lot of players rising for it. And the mark is in there. And it's a good mark to copy. Got the chance to put it back into attack again. That breeze favouring the southern end to which he's kicking at the moment. He'll have to allow for the breeze. Got a fair amount of penetration. Looks for a short lead. And guess who's taking it? Number five, Carey. Carey covering a lot of distance. Very deceptive player. Over the years, he's been, it's been said on many occasions. You can see the pass on its way. Carey throwing himself at the last moment. That's not bad for the, the veteran, as we call him, the dad of the team. Directly in front, aims for the big sticks. It's on its way, straight through the centre. Third goal, Glenel, 3-4, West Adelaide, one goal. Des Herbert this time has to uh, compete against the Giant because Micken wasn't there, but Wiedemann was. He'll be looking towards Herbert, kicked the ball wide. That's good tactics too, beautifully placed, getting under the form of the ball. He was off all right, and down to ground he goes because Dennis Russell with a reflex tackle took him out across the half-back line. Drop punt. Obviously this breeze really assisting. Greg Summit in the mark at centre wing. Immediately bolts. Micken in trouble. As a matter of fact, lost a lot of ground there as Filkey received. Now goes short back to Williams, and that's where this ball started from. Micken towards his half forward line. Herbert, the man he's after, this time finds Russell, gets it over brilliantly to um, Ryan, but uh, the kick is not straight. Through for one point. 1 1. The Wolves, 3 4 Glenelg. 17 minutes gone, first turn. Kick off more or less straight down the centre. The danger man there will be Carey, tapping the ball away from Wiedemann. Gave him no opportunity whatsoever. Swooped on straight towards centre half forward. Winter comes out, backs his judgment. Oh, copping beautifully done. Bobs and weaves, goes for the handball over to Kernahan. Kernahan short, looking for Kidney. It's gone astray, though. Canalaptus is there and takes a good safe mark in defence for West Adelaide. He started off in fine form. His kick on the outer side is dropping just that little bit short, and it's a good mark again. Big Micken is there to take it. West Adelaide working the ball around the outer side. There to target again, Wiedemann. A lightning hand pass he did before across to Grosser. A little bit of a shove, aims towards Ryan at centre half forward. He can't claim the ball. They're in over the top. The umpire must bounce. They will at centre half forward for West Adelaide. So West Adelaide not doing all that badly against the breeze. Been playing so far, just on 18 and a half minute mark in the first quarter. Ball comes out, no one can break clear, the pack develops. The score, Glenelg 3-4-22, the umpire indicating it's a free kick. And it looks as though it'll be Mr Salisbury to come clear. His kick to the centre of the ground. A lot of high flyers, but no markers. Oh, there's a decent old ride, Carey goes through with a kick, loses it however. There's the handball straight into the centre of Filkey. Simons didn't bother to tackle him. Goes wide, almost pulled in then by Russell. The ball's down on the ground. Comes out to Wayne Stringer. He'll break away. The kick is aimed towards centre half forward to Alan Stringer. One hand to it. Kidney loses the run of it. Cantor left it into his back to Gibbs. Aims to the towards the goals. Straight through the centre. And at the 19 minute mark, first quarter, the fourth goal on the board for Glenelg. They're on 4 4. West Adelaide 1 1. The movement then, really positive. Over the top comes Stringer. Kidney. Cantalaftis applies the pressure. The hand pass is good. Then finally, Ross Gibbs has the opportunity. Clear no pressure put on. Straight through the centre. His goal. And that's four to the base side. 4-4 four, four to 1-1. One, one. So, Micken and Carey. 
Mickin beginning to take a lot of field marks. Carey getting the tap inside the square. Again the man. As he comes away, Filky to Herbert. The running lamb. He puts it forward into no man's land. Scotty Salisbury almost. Randall Bennett did it well. Beautifully done. And there's the youngsters popped it in. That's his second. And Bradley Ryan would be very pleased with that effort. Well, it's a great effort. Uh, it will go through the hands there of Salisbury. Plenty of pressure by Bennett, but the casualness in which uh, the newcomer in Ryan comes in like a veteran, puts it straight through the centre for a goal to West Adelaide. <coughs> Almost 21 minutes into the first quarter, Micken, he got the tap out, McDermott, Aims wide, Stringer's got a chance to run after it. McGuinness downfield against Cantalaptus. Cantalaptus read far better. He's under pressure, gets the handball away. Deep in towards Burgess, close to the line. Can't control it, but Kernahan can. He looks towards the uh, lead. Well, well, he was looking further downfield, but Summerton chipped in a little bit short and took the mark in defence. Been a good battle so far. Just around the outer side of the ground. It's being worked that way at the moment. The umpire says play on as the handball will come over to Hamilton. Hamilton gets it moving again. It's still on the half-back line. Williams had an opportunity. It'll end up with Williams. He ran right through that half-back line. Into the centre to Hamilton. Morris gave him a chance to handball again if necessary. But Hamilton decides to go for the kick. They're aiming for the big target. That's oh, well done. Lamb as he gets the ball out. Here's a chance for a handball again. As we see Morris streaking downfield. Puts it onto his boot. This great football started off by number 14 in Lamb. Another goal to West Adelaide. The movement by Hamilton, very, very positive. The man they're after is in the centre of those two, Wiedemann. But watch Lamb's take off. Beautifully done, past McFarlane, that desperate last hand. But Morris is the running player. Here he comes, over the top, and the 200 game man really spears the centre with his left footer. Good goal. So now Kernahan having his first run. Williams obviously will tag him. So there's been a double change in the square. Grusser. Out wide. All taken. Filky in trouble. The hand pass. All lucky to Herbert. Swings wide. Wiedemann in strife again. There's a chain of hand passes. The wall's really beginning to run in lines now. As Des Herbert comes, seeks the line. Morris sinks the boot. Ross Gibbs. <laughs> McFarlane and a bounce. Rick Kinnear try bouncing that one right on the line and he decides to come in a little closer. So Wiedemann, seven. At the back, Grosser, 28. He's the player that receives. Now he'll be looking towards his full forward. There he is. Johnny Falking on the bolt. Beautiful piece of Ruckman, Rover to full forward. Can the job be finished off? Well, there's your answer. Goal umpire says, yes, he can. So Johnny Fulton posts his first. 4-1. The Wolves, 4-4 to nil. 23 minutes gone first term. Well, you watch the way that Wiedemann does this with a touch of class. Comes out towards Grosser. He read that perfectly. And it's a lightning pass towards Fulton, who was out in the lead. Straight down his throat and made no mistake. Look like a point from here. Are you up, guys? <laughs> 24 minute mark, first quarter. Kernahan going for the tap. It comes out. That's uh, the other Kernahan in David. Set a half forward, looking for Carey. Punched away. Players crunched together. Plenty of weight. Burgess. Counter left us. Goes wide. Herbert's out there lurking by himself. And you can't let him go. He'll get 15 metres to go with that. No, the umpire decides against them. But gee, West Adelaide looking pretty good at this stage against the breeze. Big fellows there again. Tell you what, Wiedemann, rose high. He's a great player, this lad. Kick is further downfield, and it's going to be another West Adelaide kick. And there was no justice, according to the fans of the Glenelg team. Aiming towards the full fort area, Ryan's gone out again. 
It could be a free kick in amongst it. There will be a free kick in amongst it. That's going to be Williams. Uh, is it Lamb to get it? Lamb is the player. Actually, Ryan had taken the mark, but the free kick had gone Lamb's way. Lines up, kicks into the breeze. Fades a little bit, as you can see. The ball drifting across from left to right. One point only, and that's a second behind to West Adelaide. 4-2 uh, to four goals, four. Chris Duthie. Nice-looking kick goes inside the square. Ball Williams' first spark in front place. These two very talented youngsters. What a battle that will be. Des Herbert. Gee, they've let him run loose, Herbert. Yes, um, he's a good runner. At the back is Wiedemann. Oh, Morris again tried with the right foot this time. Couldn't quite break the wall, and we'll see a bounce. 22 is Bradley Ryan. He's kicked two goals this term. He'll be pleased with that. Johnny Faulting, 38. At the back, Wiedemann. Bit of heads down, tails up. And John Faulting will wait. So will Jeff Morris for this bounce. Wiedemann tried the steal. That one didn't work. We'll find another mess. This time it comes out. All Faulting again. Puts a very, very high ball up. And that will drop like a stone. Johnny Seabone commits himself. But it will be the free. And that is Chris Duthie. He'll put the traffic out wide. Tony Simons. Beats Filkey as well. Faulting. Back to where it came from, and again, this man commits himself beautifully. And Dennis Russell will take a kick from the back pocket. Russell gives the Western Australian, just stands his ground. Looks for a, a target further downfield, no lead at that particular time, but a magnificent kick from the little fellow. Aimed through Carey, he couldn't control it, tapped on. It ends up Hamilton getting over to Burgess, a long handball comes out. Summerton, number 21. Centre wing, this is danger, it's going to be Stephen Kernahan rising. Over to Simons, he'll be put right under the hammer. Gets away, coolly sidesteps. Just a short one, Alan Stringer. Copping will be on the lead. Closely pressed, punched away well then by Winter. Goes deep, Lamb, a short one, just to get the ball away. McKinnon, use his body, plenty of weight being thrown in. The umpire says that's fair enough. And it's going to be a bounce down on the half forward out of side of the ground. Cop that, Cobbing. <laughs> yes. This bounce. Young Kidney going in. And the two youngsters, Williams, Kernahan. There's a handful of talent there. Again, working very, very hard and coming around is young David Kernahan. But Lamb, the stealer. He's taken down. Hard, rugged football being played at the moment. And that's holding the ball. Tigers have their ball across the half forward line very highly placed Bradley Ryan having a run on the ball it appears and he'll be freed on the half back line plenty of movement Morris forward Williams Kernahan, Wiedemann and Williams the mark that is not that's Steve Miller he swings around onto his left foot down towards half forward, trying to hook it down was Des Herbert, then follows it at ankle height. Randall really tried to get at that ball. McKinnon is successful though. He sets up Des Herbert and down he goes. A good bump from Johnny Seabone. Plenty of energy there. And daytime is all, all of a sudden nighttime. Well, let's have a look at that again if we possibly can. <laughs> You'll see the bump. No, we didn't see the bump. Here it goes, the ball coming through. McKinnon gets rid of it, Herbert in the meat sandwich, Seabarm coming in the opposite direction, over he goes. But meanwhile the ball is in play in that uh, right forward pocket at the northern end of the ground. That's Herbert getting treatment, Wiedemann. Shoots for goal, one point only, minus score 4-3 West Adelaide, Glenelg. 4-4, one point separating the sides, and we're almost at the 29 and a half minute mark, first quarter here at Richmond. In fact, that's bad skills from Mark Wiedemann. He's a much talent, more talented player than that. That's a gimme goal. They went begging and a very valued one into this breeze. 
So Chris Duthie now. Will go long. Off the side of the boot somewhat, but still makes good distance. Kernahan at the back. Williams waiting. Simons did it well. One grab. Long hand pass. Kernahan. Taken down. Got to be holding the ball. And McKinnon, the man from Mount Gambier, inside the square. Has Williams wide. Has Grosso. Oh, he's going to sit, but can't quite get the ride. Coming around his kidney. And there is the siren to end a very entertaining first term. One point the difference with Glenelg. 4-4, 28, leading West Adelaide 4-3, 27. Well, a vital second quarter coming up. Only one point separating the sides. West Adelaide, the advantage of the breeze. They kicked four against it in the first quarter. There's a handball coming out. The chance for uh, Glenelg, of all people, to be going towards that northern end. Good punch away. Comes out towards a half-back flank position for Westies. They're on their home ground, aiming for McKinnon. He can't get it. It'll be over the line almost on the full no. The umpire said no. And it's going to be a throw to take place. He doesn't look very close to being over the line, but he's in a far better position than we are. Carey against Mickon. Carey getting the tap. McGuinness lost it. Goes back towards number five in Carey. A very short one. Over the line. 4-4 four, four to 4-3. Four, Glenelg leading. There to the northern end. That's from the right to left of your screen. Carey still trying to break clear. Grabbed by Lamb. Can't get clear. The umpire. Argent moving in. All he can do is have another bounce. And then do we see the free. Carey. Turned around. Ends up on the ground. But he got rid of the ball. See, that was punched on well then by Stringer. Goes to Kernahan. Back to Stringer. Good relief work there by Williams coming through. Lamb ridden into the ground. Number 14. Free kick. West Adelaide. And they're going to take full advantage of this breeze in the opening moments of play. Second quarter here at Richmond. Penetrating kick too, but Salisbury brilliantly smothered Randall. And Johnny Seabone goes wide. The running, McFarland. Out wide, Filkey and Simon. Simon's in trouble in the first term. He looks to have recovered as Filkey, first to the ball, and could have dropped it, then make sure that he's seen being held while not in possession. And frustration from Tony Simons. But it's going to be Grant Filkey. He's a good kicker of the ball, that's long. Good 55, 60 metres, a huge fly from Duthy over the top. Will be recovered well though, that's Wayne Stringer but won't get to it, and we'll see a throw in. Randall Bennett, um, been in everything so far. Jeffrey Morris, 11, playing 200 games today. 14, Stringer, 7, Wiedemann. Duthie, playing full back, smothered, over the line, throw in. Still one point the difference. This time, West Adelaide the opportunity to kick with this breeze. Worth three, perhaps four goals. Wiedemann front spot. John Seabohm always pressuring. And this time, young Mark Wiedemann has him won himself for free. And the angle is exactly the same, the distance the same as the one that he kicked out at the other end. And let's see whether he can improve on that. Drop punt. In his memory, will be that last shot he had for goal. Drop punt pulled across the line of the ball though, and it's floated through. So 5-3. West Adelaide 4-4 Glenelg. Mark Wiedemann's first. He's like Murray, isn't he? <laughs> mm. You saw they gave him the turf. Cutting it. Mm. Three and three quarter minute mark, second quarter. Of all people, McKinnon getting the tap down, went straight to Carey. He'll go wide towards the outer side. Gibbs, the Western Australian, overrunning the ball, picked up by Simons. He can't get very far away with it. Bit of pushing and shoving going on. Eventually, Hamilton came through. There's going to be a free kick to go the Bay's way, and it's going to be taken by that very valuable player in number 15, 12 tree. Aims towards Kernahan, fisted away, down on the ground. 
Herbert's there. Right, oh, he's ridden into the ground by Cuffing. Cuffing goes crook. Cuffing also gets the free kick. There's a 15-metre penalty to go with it. McDermott gives him a little bit of a, a thank you. There's another 15, minute, uh, 15 metres. And that would be the greatest 15 metre handed out of all time. I think that's 30, Rod, because the first 15 went to one player, then the second 15, a bit of a pat in the face, and then a knee in the groin helped it out. That's right, and that uh, was very evident in that picture. So it could be a very valuable goal. Copping shouldn't make a mistake. He doesn't. Straight through the centre. Fifth goal, five goals, four plays, five, three, one points the difference. Micken and Carey. They've been doing battle all day. And then Williams and Kernahan come in when both change. So the kick straight down by the walls over the top of Duthi, or two defenders spoil themselves. Then Stringer goes the duck, and that's got to be holding the ball. And Randall Bennett will go short. There's a man that has snuck down into the goal square. There he is, coming around the corner. And that uh, player is Steve Miller. That's his first goal, and a well-earned one to Westies. Well, it's a matter of taking full advantage. The free kick was obvious there against uh, Stringer. And I'll tell you what, Bennett read it perfectly. He saw the player in Miller standing right in the goal square. Look at him ride the bump, puts it on the boot, through the centre, goal number six. Kerry against Mickens, six and a half minute mark, second quarter. Out with the foot. Out goes the free kick. And the 318 game player not impressed. Micken. High in the air towards the centre half forward position. No one can grab it. Gee, they had trouble grasping the ball. Eventually ends up with McFarlane. He took it from Talbot. Williams grabbed when not in possession. We'll get the free kick. Different Craig Williams than we saw earlier in the season too. Starting to show signs of form and it's a welcome sign for West Adelaide. And it's vital game today. Set a half forward. Wiedemann can't get it. Wayne Stringer. Morris was there. Burgess. They're all in over the top. The umpire says, well, that looks a little bit ugly. We'll have a bounce down. 6-3-39, West Adelaide, Glenelg are five points down. They're on 5-4-34. Mick in the tap, wide to McKinnon, picked up by Tony Simons. Then Leon 12th tree, hurries one towards his half-forward spot. Not well-directed, Johnny Cantle after normally an error-free player. Oh, it does get messy too when uh, the mark isn't taken cleanly. And a bounce must result. Stringer one, 38, Talbot. A clear winner then was Kernahan to get it clear. Greg Summerton, clever use of the body. Through comes Hamilton, Johnny Cantle after us. He saw the running Filky. He'll be challenged though. McFarlane in there as well. Oh, good slap. Scotty Salisbury really put the body in then. In there is uh, Grosser. Grosser. Head down, tail up, and a few curls have been added to that. Uh, top by head into the mud. Micken. And Kidney. More cattle after us. Well done. Play on his call. That's good umpiring. Des Herbert. Long. Down towards full forward. Up and down before acceptances was uh, Miller. And Johnny Seabone receives the hand pass from Dennis Russell. He'll go wide. Tony Simons. Fulke giving him a lot of space to work in there. The luxury of one touch to ground and then kicks it round fine stringer. Has Kernahan, and that's well done. Set a wing, playing on. Precision football being played by the Tigers at the moment. Here's Copping on the bolt, comes through. Greg Summerton picked up, dumped. 
Copping tries to barge through, can't do so. Randall Bennett in strife. McGuinness doesn't want it, then decides it's free. Comes over to Kernahan in diabolical trouble. In goes McGuinness again. Short. Gibbs in trouble. And some manhandling being done. And uh, the fickle finger of warning put out by umpire Laurie Argent. And it's going to go the way of Gibbs. And not before time. With the drop punt. That's a good kick into this breeze. Oh, top mark, Alan Stringer. Good kick, good position, good mark. Ball coming in very high. Watch the play get under the fall of the ball. The only one to read it well. And 50-gamer, Alan Stringer, has a chance to kick his first goal. Decreases the angle. Plays on straight away. Clever stuff, straight through. His first, Westies. 6-3, Glenelg. 6-3, they take the lead by one point. Second quarter, we're now ten and a half minutes into it. It's Carey against Micken. Micken getting the tap. Picked up beautifully by Wiedemann. He aims wide, punched away by Russell. Miller's in there, trying to bring the ball under control. Eventually gets it, breaks clear, tackled from behind by Russell, holding the ball, and a good free kick, and well done in defence. Russell was seen earlier in the season in the uh, forward area. Towards the outer side, Micken claiming the ball, can't get it. They're in over the top again. This time it's David uh, Kernahan to come clear with the ball. The kick's not a good one, however. Straight over the line at centre wing, and it's going to be a free kick to go West Adelaide's way. It looks as though Williams might be the flag. No, it won't be. Ed Summerton further behind the play to get the free kick. He usually aims towards centre half forward. That time there's no change. Punched away. Kernahan was their target. He was behind. Bennett leads in the run for the ball. Comes across. Handball to Herbert. Herbert over towards Filkey. Filkey's under a fair amount of pressure, but still managed to come up with the ball. He'll eventually have to kick, and it's a bad one. It allows Stringer in. That could be dangerous. Stringer, the lead is on from a Guinness. Drops down the waiting arm. 15 metres will go with that. He got a nice old chub on the back. Up by a Kinnear coming in, not paying 15 metres. But the lead is on. It goes towards Copping. Up go the hands. Can't take it. Kernahan trying to control the ball. Hamilton using his body. Well done. Herbert, another handball coming out. It's tapped on. McFarlane could have almost got Gibbs could have almost got the free. It's Hamilton going after it. He receives treatment from Kernahan going through. And it's no big your pardons out there at the moment. And this is good football to see. Great stuff as we come now to the 12 and a half minute mark, second quarter. Kernahan and down to Leon 12th tree. Short, copping the man he's after. This time front spot, and the mark will be paid. Peter Winter. He'll have his hands full with old elastic arms, but uh, he can certainly make front spot. He has the body weight and height to go with Stephen Copping. Only one goal so far to Copping, so Winter's done his job superbly. Micken in over the top. Bennett, the hurried kick from inside the pack to a very vacant centre square. Seabone, Wiedemann takes him down and into the money goes. Ladies, you'd play dollars for that. That's free out there at the moment. Heaps of mud and John Seabone right in the middle of it. With a drop punt. Wants to go wide, did it well. Filkey and Simons, the good battle. McGuinness, the hand pass over. The odds two to one. The runners have got it. In go the bodies. Down goes Greg Summerton. And we'll see a bounce. That man's centre screen is Rick Kinnear. Two, Herbert, one, Stringer. And six, one would imagine, is Williams against Kernahan. Filkey doing a lot of work from his centre wing position. There's his opposition wingman, Simons. He's coughing. Look at him pluck it out of there. Hands like a crab. Talented uh, full forward this man is. Copping has kicked one goal this term. He's got two goals this term. And so Glenelg go to 7-4, Westies 6-3. 14 minutes gone, second term. 
And you'll see those elastic hands we were talking about as he reaches out, just far too strong, experience and ability. The bounce at the 14 and a half minute mark, second quarter here at the Richmond Oval. And it's only a matter of seven points separating the sides. Glenelg in front at the moment. West Adelaide the advantage of the breeze towards the southern end, which is left to right of your screen. Another bounce down. Carey against Micken. Carey's hands to it. Goes to Kidney. Kidney against the breeze towards centre half forward. Kernahan the player he's looking for. Goes for the handball. This could be dangerous. Stringer gets the ball away. It goes down deep towards the goal square. In fact, the handball is too good with McDermott to start that off, actually. Got it down towards Copping. And eventually the ball runs through. McGuinness with the open goal. You can see the difference there of hitting the hands and one inch above. There, just no control on that with a kick in. Is wide. Is Fulke. Short. Wiedemann. All through the hand. Normally would have gobbled one up like that. Ryan. The hand pass over Summerton. Short on the bolt. Is faulting. Well, gee, looks good. As soon as he charges, the players across that centre line and the half forward line know he'll run. Well, the distance will be absolutely no problem to this man. The accuracy is not there. One point. So the Wolves 6-4, trail Glenelg 7-6 at the 15-minute mark of the second term. And Johnny Faulting, really, that would have been a valued goal. Good positive football from one end to the other, only to see a kick in. That man of many parts in John McFarland to kick off. A lot of height and look at the pack waiting for it. Carey is behind, it comes down. The handball goes out, trot looking for Russell. Plenty of pressure being applied. Chance for Bennett, can he get it anywhere? Yes, he does, gets it over to Salisbury. Salisbury gets it back downfield and a clearing kick puts it towards that centre wing. A little bit of pushing and jumping going on, but 12-3 too good. Plays on immediately. He looks down towards Kernahan. The leader's on. Got away from Williams. He runs on again. Another lead. Deep into the pocket. Looking for McGuinness. McGuinness does not let him down. Too far out from goal. Will put it high. Copping's the target. He's making position. Winters in front. Comes down to the ground. Still in play. There's Copping. Looking for the free kick. Not paid. Goes down towards uh, Stringer. Stringer might have copped one a little bit higher than the umpire indicating as he went through. It's very close to the line. And uh, a pretty high tackle, so Alan Stringer has a chance of bringing his second goal up. A very sharp angle. Looking to bring the ball back, the goal umpire indicating it's going across, it's one point only. So it's 7-6 on the board at Glenelg against the breeze. West Adelaide 6-4, they're on 40 points. So Peter Winter to kick in, all dangerously close to the line, but a beautifully placed Burgess. The hand pass on. McKinnon. Stephen Kernahan chasing. And the drop punt. All beautifully done. McFarlane. Oh, he's an evergreen man. I can remember when he first started. And here's the mark of McFarlane's. Beautiful pair of hands, good control and balance. Nice kick. Right in front of the telecast point. And uh, this time it's um, Stephen Kernahan infringing against his opposition in Williams. These two have been at it all day. Two very talented youngsters. Wiedemann and the dive and the tackle is high. And if you could slide back 20 years, doesn't he look like his old man? It's not. He is a complete player for himself. Screw punt down towards the pocket and again the Tiger defence really holding well in this term. Very important without kicking against the breeze as Salisbury goes short. Kidney there, beautiful support, goes long and the ball drops like a stone. Kernahan, the hand pass over Burgess. He'll go long, Faulting wants it. At the back, Russell. 
Salisbury and the speedster of the Bay side. Here he is, Peter Carey. 318 games. Gets it over to McFarlane. Back to Carey. Looks like a rover at the moment. Leon 12th tree. Very, very close to the line. In strife. Could have been holding the ball. Was David Kernahan. Not there. Oh, look to the safety of the line. Wasn't there, though. Stephen Talbot. Kick forward, and it'll be Hamilton that'll stop all of that stuff. Back to where it came from. Over the line in front of the coach's box for a throw-in. Twenty minute mark into the second quarter. Oh, the pack develops out by a centre free kick. So it's one against one, and it's going to be Kernahan to get the free kick. Kernahan, the leader's on, puts it in deep in towards the forward pocket. No, well, it's not. It's on the half forward flank. The kick is not a good one. McGuinness couldn't get there in time to control it, and it'll be a throw in. Seven six plays, six four in Glenelg's favour. Grosser. Is kicked towards the centre. The Evergreen McFarlane. He and Carey, the only two players that were in that 1973 Premiership. Over to Gibbs. The kick by Gibbs. 12 3. Plays on. Shoot for goal. And has missed. Would you believe it? Oh, he had the free kick and missed. So West Adelaide 6 4. Glenelg are on 7 7. And I think Leon 12 3 just cannot believe his own eyes. 49 to 40. As the kickoff comes out, straight down the centre of the ground, Lamb in front, a chance for Talbot. Went through Kernahan, McGuinness still got the ball. He looks towards the flank again, just inside the line, and it's going to be, as you can see, it's going to be a throw in. Pretty casual kicking then, both from Kernahan and from McGuinness. Both uh, players should know better than that. Lamb. Johnny Cantalaftis round the corner, close to the line, big Mark Micken, good tackle, McKinnon, busy, McGuinness, long with a drop punt, Hamilton will have to sit in the death seat and does it well, gets one for his trouble, and the body was there, bit of a smile from Laurie Argent, but Hamilton's got the ball. Micken the lead, that's ignored. Wiedemann, the man he's after at the back, Johnny Seabone, picked out well though by David Kernahan. Short, 12th tree, in McDermott, wider, Tony Simons. Copping is there, but uh, Simons goes much longer. Will it carry? And uh, West and Glenelg really blowing their chances in front of goals, kicking into this breeze at the moment. Three kicks for goal, three points. 7 8, the Tigers, 6 10, 6 4, Westies. The kick out is. Almost by Micken, but the free is there. McKinnon, short. After him, late arrival, David Kernahan. Birthday boy next Wednesday, 19. What a pair of talented youngsters. McKinnon to Wiedemann. Not there, Filkey. With courage blocked in. Morris, legged and freed. Now, if this man gets onto the ball, he'll drop that right in the goal square. Has a following breeze. Oh, that's a nice drop punt. Off hands through for a point. So Westy 6-5, Charles Glenelg 7-8 at the 23 minute mark second term. Duthie, the kickoff, wide towards that outer side. Carey getting into McKinnon. Going to be picked over McKinnon goes a Phil coming through, threaded through. That's an opportunity to Bennett, has a shot for goal. That was a pretty casual sort of shot, and he's walked it straight through the centre. And that is another goal to West Adelaide. So that brings their seventh goal up on the board. The kick in. Watch the skills of Filke. Beautifully balanced. The hand pass out was excellent. Randall Bennett was the player that popped the ball up high. The wind did the rest. Pulled it through, and that's his first. And a much needed one from Westies. Three points the difference. Kernahan, Micken, Kernahan the tap. Oh, oh, McGuinness gets one round the ear hole. Free kick from the square. Good kick into the breeze. Kernahan the man. Then comes around the corner. Leon 12th tree at the back or waiting is Williams. 
or deals it out to Ross Gibbs, then carries on with it. Good body work. Tony Burgess, out wide. Looking for Morris, doesn't find him. Here's the man that really is playing on experience and courage, McFarlane. Simons, short. In there looking for McDermott. Had time to fall, recover, back to Simons. Simons goes short, not well directed, Greg Summerton. Summerton to the handball over to Hamilton. He'll look straight towards centre half forward and Wiedemann. Too far for him. Danger. Crosser at the back of the pack. Open goal. Runs in. It's on its way. The direction though is astray. Six behind on the board. Westies kicking themselves out of it now. Seven, six to seven, eight. Two points separating the sides. At quarter time, four three to four four in Glenelg's favour by one point. Doozy wide. Big fellows are set. Punched away. Herbert. Cupped a nasty one earlier in the play. McFarlane over the top of it again. McDermott. Simons looking for the ball. Can't get it, however. It's tapped back behind play. Taken by uh, David Kernahan. His kick goes further downfield. And it's a real effort by Gibbs to get down there on the hands and knees and take the mark. He aims into the forward pocket. Big carry. Could have almost given away the free kick. In fact, has given away the free kick. The umpire's called play on. And that's exactly what West Adelaide have done. They put it into the centre. McKinnon's there. McKinnon will have miles of space, eventually he gets flattened as he gets rid of the ball towards centre half forward. Morris, will he do it? He'll get plenty of distance in the kick. The direction is it clear? It is. It's true. And a great goal in by Morris. His second, eight on the board to West Adelaide. Eight, six plays, seven, eight in a thriller here at the Richmond ground. Well, a classic movement with the ball. McKinnon, his delivery was long, very penetrating. Over the top, but look at Morris. With experience in the 200-gamer, looked at the goal face, kicked to the white sticks and split the centre for his second. Westies 8-6, Glenelg 7-8. So the two youngsters will get at it at the moment. Williams with a second round house right, did it well. Wiedemann back to McKinnon. Westies lost ground then, so copping the steal. 12th tree, downed, oh. so is uh, Kernahan, free kick. down like nine pins, and a delayed free, goes on to Gibbs, he plays on, gets quickly to the goal face, almost carry, not there, beautifully done, players going down like nine pins at the moment, Hamilton at the end of a chain of hand passes, and long towards half forward, Morris, front spot, Johnny Seabone's got him tagged, the ball's flicked out to Stringer, whoops, down goes Des Herbert, Half his bones are shaken loose, I think. That's the second one that he's copped. He's persisted. There he is, set a screen. He'll go short. Beautifully directed. Playing on immediately. The ball put up high. And that looked great. That looked to be Miller. That's his second. And Westies, 8-6, 9-6, Dunelg 7-8. Herbert. Well, he certainly knew what to do after he copped that one before. Straight down to Miller. Miller proving a very useful player. Aims for the big sticks, allows for the breeze straight through the centre for the ninth goal to West Adelaide. <laughs> 28 minute mark in the second quarter. It's going to be Kernahan to try and emerge with the ball. He doesn't, however. Bennett does, gets a kick out. Simon's out there by himself. Under pressure from Morris, can he get away? They're two speedsters. He's looking to get a handball to Russell, but that wasn't going to be on. Instead, he goes wide towards the outer side. McDermott there takes the mark. Plenty of weight being used, and pretty fairly in the game so far. A couple of incidents, but it's on on that outer side at the moment, and a free kick will go to Copping. Copping to the half-forward line, and Carey to full forward is interesting. So it's going to be Copping, driving it towards centre half forward. Up they go, Williams, a tower of strength, number six. Getting right back into form. And if West Adelaide are going to succeed this year, he's one of the players that will bring them right into it. His kick in towards the centre, looking for Kernahan, not for Kernahan, for Wiedemann. It's picked up by Kernahan, goes wide. There's the hand pass to get it moving again to McKinnon. Breaks right through the centre. Oh, bad kick, however. Puts it straight down towards centre half forward. A handball eases the pressure to Salisbury. Has to get it away to Simons. Back towards his teammate in Seabaum. Seabaum to casually up towards 12th tree. And 12th tree have taken the mark. Plays on. And the Tigers are into it again. 
through to a young David Kernahan, but that's a great mark taken on the last line by Tony Burgess. It's interesting, Wins has gone out with Copping. Burgess has stayed there. Gross has stayed on the ground. That's holding. Stringer out wide, looking for McGuinness. He's mown down, and here's Big Carey. Always challenged by uh, Hamilton. And we'll see a throw in. So the moves being really done very quickly by both coaches Campbell and Curley. Trying to get some mobility in. Micken down or Gibbs the quick snapshot from the throw in. Results in a goal right on the siren. And Glenelg at the long break, 8 8, will trail West Adelaide 9 goals, 6, and the second goal to that player in Ross Gibbs. Four points the difference after the long break here at Milner Street. And again, it's Micken and Carey. Carey, 318 games to his credit as McFarlane drives the ball. Now the Tigers kicking with this breeze. The ball carrying a good five to ten metres longer than towards the other end. 37 with himself wrapped around the ball is Peter Winter. And we'll see another bounce. Laurie Argent and Rick Kinnear in control of this game. And there have been some good positive body clashes in this game too has uh, really pulled the crowd to its feet. Cantalaftis and Ross Gibbs. The ball very close to the line. Gibbs again the second bite at it, out of bounds. Sun breaking out now, conditions almost perfect for football. And I believe the one thing that spoils this game is uh, the wind. Chris McDermott, again hands and knees. And again, throw in. 20, McKinnon. Centre line for the West Adelaide side have really dominated this game. Filkey and McKinnon in particular, in particular really getting a bag of kicks. Cantle after us. In strongly, well supported there by, Win by Winter. Beautifully done, Grosser. The longer hand pass, all oh, puts his teammate in heaps of strife. Winter goes to ground and we'll see another throw in. One and a half minute mark into the third quarter. Big Fellows Fly comes to the front of the pack. Here's a chance to clear. It's got taken very, very close to the line and eventually dragged over the line and it wasn't going anywhere at all. It ends up in exactly the same position. Only a matter of 15 metres or 10 metres round. Kern hands in front. He decides he might have the quick snap for goal. It's been fisted away. Simons with an opportunity. Picks it up. He's got a chance to screw it back towards the goal square. It'll be offline though as it goes deep into win to the uh, over the line. It will be a uh, free kick to go Winter's way anyhow. He was almost taking the mark. It's a pretty lonely sort of sight when you've got to reach over and get the ball from the other side of the fence. Winter out wide. It's going to be Kernahan over the top of uh, Williams, and what a great battle they've had during the day. There wouldn't be much between the two players. Stephen Kernahan. Tremendous potential for a youngster. Distance in the kick is towards the goal square. They're looking for copping. He can't get it, however. Down on the deck. The hand pass is a wild one. In comes Carey. No, he can't control it. He's in underneath. He makes sure it doesn't go anywhere. He holds up traffic, and that was the wise thing to do at that particular time. So it's on the half-forward line for Glenelg. They've still got to back into the uh, style of play they had in the first quarter. Quickly picked up by Kidney. Goes towards the goal squares. It's uh, off the hands there of Kidney. No, not Kidney, of uh, Gibb. He couldn't get away with the ball. A hand pass comes out. There was a nice old thump behind the game. I must have looked, missed it. I looked towards the forward pocket and it was Kidney to pick the ball up and put it straight through the centre and we see a goal to Glenelg with the breeze. So that makes their ninth goal on the ball, their nine goals eight and let's have a look at that again. Look at the work that Cantalaftis was doing and it all came unstuck when Kidney stole that ball front of the pack, typical Rovers goal straight through the centre, he's got himself too. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Carry and Micken. Micken that last uh, desperate touch. In is there is McDermott all working very, very hard. He's upset very quickly. Whoops, and 15 metres could have been gone, but McKinnon quite content to handle over. Did it well, Burgess, or not well directed uh, at all. And it's gone directly to the hands of that man who goes much further. That looks to be Murphy. Working hard, Kernahan, McGuinness, all well tackled, unloaded, holding the ball, and it will be a Wolves free. And a minor wrestle as well. Nothing in that, and it'll be Craig Burton's ball. And Burton middle. reckons 15 metres. That's two of them. Well, there's 30 metres, and a nice looking kick. Into the breeze, long and low. Johnny Folting can't control it. Working hard, Carey, the desperate touch. McDermott down, and a pack of walls on over the top of him. A little bit clumsy, and uh, some fireworks in this early moments of the third term. Obviously fired up, both coaches really having words to say at half-time. And McDermott, nice-looking kick, 50 metres. Williams, the disciplined spoil from Kernahan, McKinnon again. Lamb, McGuinness after Lamb. Like the slaughter of, in comes McGuinness, long, down towards full forward, waiting at the back was Hamilton, or oh, danger for was Gibbs, Burgess, oh, down, four of them down, his little kidney again, he pokes it up, and he's got goal three. Grinnell, 10-8, Westies, 9-6, at the five-minute mark, third term. And a chase of the fatty once again of Kidney. Gee, re read that uh, like a true rover. Copping was the target. When it came to the ground, Kidney was there as he was just a moment ago. The hand pass went astray. Kidney swooped on the ball, aimed over the shoulder, threw the goals, and got his third. Been playing now, six and a half minutes into the third quarter. No one can break clear with the ball. Gee, they're trying hard. Thank you very much. Tolbert cop one right behind the ear. But uh, an umpire indicating that there is a free kick coming out of it. Well, I don't think it was for that particular incident. I think you might have seen something else. So it's going to be Kidney to get the free kick. Down towards that flank. The hand pass comes away from Witter. Oh, Burgess has done it again. McDermott, but luckily Hamilton is there. And they're out of strife on that outer side of the ground. Herbert... A lot of handball, but it's not neat handball at the moment. The kick gets it away, out of trouble, towards the centre of the ground. A lot of Bay players around. There's Wayne Stringer getting the ball over to McFarlane. McFarlane will do it. There's a player down for West Adelaide behind, as it's aimed towards Kernahan. Summerton can't go anywhere. Filkey went in. Gee, he was almost rolled. Picked up. The kick is wide by Williams. Brings it over towards the half-back flank position. McKinnon took it very casually. He dragged off the ball by Russell and must get the free kick. So it's going to be McKinnon. And the mark pulled in by Filky. He aims towards centre half forward. Almost brought in then. It's going to be Lamb. Gets it over to Herbert. He's going to be receiving a bit of treatment. Turns, bobs, weaves, the ball swing right across towards the pocket, drops it. The little fella read that pretty well. It was a pretty courageous sort of mark. The wind swung it around very, very strongly onto a sharp angle. And let's hope that he can put this one through for his side. And that's not Neil Curley going over the top. It's a, one of our jet aircraft. There's a lead on from Folding. But Grosser says, this will do me. I'll aim for the big sticks. The goal umpire says it's offline. Nine goals, seven, 61 to West Adelaide, while Glenelg are on 10 goals, eight, 68. So Chris Duthie now. The lead by Kidney's ignored. Goes much wider than that, though. Johnny Seabone, the man he's after. Out there is also Stephen Talbot. Coming after him is Lamb. Also Wiedemann. Doesn't have the pace to catch him, though. The hand pass is a suicide ball. In again. Still the heavy bodies flying in over the top. Craig Burton is applying the pressure. And the free is paid. Burton will be looking for faulting. 
Has to kick a long way, though. Goes off the side of the boot. He was looking for Morris. Can't find him. The hand pass is slick from Lamb. Here's Grosser. Short. Des Herbert in the pocket. Well, the angle almost uh, impossible. And look at Scott Salisbury sneak around. He's got to go around there another five metres yet. I don't know what he's doing there. Play on is called. Mark Mickens made space for himself at half forward. Carey stands the mark and watches Micken walk back. The distance will be a real challenge for uh, Micken. With a breeze directly into his face. Left footer, drop punt, hangs in the air, the big pack gather, and the disciplined punch forward then. Salisbury gets a shocking bounce. Round the corner comes Seabone. And here's the battle of the youngsters. Simons, Filkey, McKinnon, Micken there to run support. Wide to Filkey. Gets a fit of the fumbles. Over to Randall Bennett. And again, that ball runs loose on the flank and over the line out of bounds. So, Wiedemann, McKinnon and Filkey now really wasting the use of the ball. Wiedemann Carey. Carey dumps it almost directly down Stringer's throat. He'll go long. Micken has formed the wall and beautifully done. Very fine field marker, Micken. He'll go short. Here's a prolific kick getter too, Randall. Randall Bennett, kicked a goal in the second term. The left footer. High, spoiled, forwarded, 200 gamer Jeff Morris. Tries a kick from grassroots level. In there is Lamb, and we'll see a bounce. Randall Bennett with hands on head, 17. 11 is Morris. Seven is Dennis Russell. Carey, clever use of the body. Little kidney, almost gets one ripped out. Kernahan lumbers after the ball. Here's Stringer, the hand pass. Oh, Simons, he's into a pack of wolves there. He's in strife, McKinnon, Micken, in with a bum and down. Out comes Simons. Round the corner he goes. Inside the square, Kernahan. After him is Burton. Oh, hard football at the moment. Players going down like nine pins. Umpire Rick Keneal will have to come and do a rescue. I think someone have got to read me a, read, a rule book too, I would see it on this particular state. Some funny things going on out there at the moment. But it's a bounce down. Carey, Simons, can't get clear. Bennett, it's a wrestling match again. And it'll be a bounce down. Ten goals, eight, 68. Glenelg, West on nine, seven, 61. The Bays, well, they need the breeze in this quarter. They've got it, and they're not doing a great deal with it. Micken gets the tap forward. In under the pack again, the ball. And now Pro indicating a free kick coming up. That'll be full marks to Salisbury for courage. Yes, great attack on the ball then at ankle level. Really committed himself. He was the only bloke that did it, and he won that free. Over the top, off hands. And this time it'll be a Wolves free. Goes to Williams. Great battle with Kernahan. Wide, well placed to Morris. Has Bennett. Forced to kick on the right foot. Goes very, very wide. Leon Grosser. Plays on immediately. Johnny Faulting on the bolt. After him, Duthie. The fastest to recover is Chris Duthie. Did it beautifully. Then back to where it came from. Kernahan will get under the fall of the ball and did it well. Centre wing. This is the youngster. Drop punt. He'll be looking for brother Stephen. Against him, Williams. Again, the discipline punch forward. In goes Alan Stringer. Heaps of vigour there. Simons. He's been a good kick getter and a fouling after disposal then. And it will go down to the forward pocket. I'll tell you what, it was one little push on the side as he got rid of the ball, but the rule says it. And there it is. The on 12th tree. Get to kick a goal, that's a surprise because he's been involved in a lot of goals for the Tigers today. To the goal square. All big fellas always there. Winter front spot, copping behind, and he's done a good job at fullback. Yes, copping has only kicked two goals so far in the game, 11 last week. And we're into the third quarter. A bit of pushing and shoving going on that outer side of the ground. And it's going to be a free kick to go the Bay's way, and they'll shoot it forward in towards that full forward area. There's the long kick. Players are gathered for it. Stringer was up for it, couldn't get it. Over the line, left forward pocket, a throw in. So it's only seven points separating the sides, but it's a different tempo on the game in the second half. I think it's steamed up there for a short time. 
But the tap goes down. Kidney tries to come out for the ball. He's dragged away immediately. It ends up with Filkey. Filkey into the wide open spaces. Counter left us after the ball. Will eventually get his kick. Gets it short. McKinnon's down after the field. Looks towards the centre. This is going to be interesting. Russell had the opportunity. Picked up by Herbert. Open territory in front of him. Looks towards the goals area. It'll go right across towards the pocket position. Always marked out there. Not, however, the umpire's playing it. Cross has moved on. He said that was good enough for me. But the umpire's got a different idea. And you'll see the ball come in towards Grosser and the grab taken. The two of them competing. Grosser just had his hands to it long enough. Perhaps there might have even been a free in it. As he lines up now, shoots for goals. Very high. Dropping to the goal square. And the hands go up. The umpire says play on. It's through with a snap. One point only. And the West Adelaide supporters are irate. Nine goals, eight. 62 West Adelaide. Glenelg are on ten goals, eight. I think that makes them 68 points as we come now to the 15 and a quarter minute mark into the quarter. Duthie. Oh, nice kick. Low, penetrating kick. Good distance. McKinnon with good pace. Beautiful balance. Pass two defenders. Pass three. And then blast the ball at the goal face. But on the last moment, it will be Dennis Russell. 4 1 point. The Tigers, 10 9. Westies, 9 8. 15 minutes gone. Third term. And the Bays really applying pressure. Kicking into the breeze. This is John Snout McFarland. Nice kick. Duthie and McFarland kicked in well at the, uh, from that end. Mark Micken taps it forward. Wiedemann. Carey. Well done, Johnny Seabohm. Really puts the ball. That's a lot of penetration towards the half forward line. Johnny Cantalaftis has done well. Burgess. McKinnon has the drop on the ball. He can't quite control it. This man can, though. This is Stephen Talbot. Talbot on the edge of the square has got 15 metres, ignores it. That could have been dangerous. It's not, however. The stringer is the man to get the mark. Oh, and the crowd, do they come to their feet? The lead is on. Copping into the open goal. A dreadful kick. Over the line on the full, straight across the face of goal. And I would feel that Stephen Copping is not 100% right. Well, I thought uh, that Peter Winter really applied good pressure, Rod. Right? The... Uh... The, the free was very doubtful at half forward, but Copping's not getting a free ball very often at all as the ball is kicked towards the half forward flank. So it was Ryan going for the handball. Stringer tried to get it over the line. It's a throw in half forward flank out of side of the ground as we come up to the 17 minute mark into the third quarter. And not much between these two teams, only five points. Nip and tuck all day. The ball back into play. Players bundled out of the way. The umpire's seen a free kick. And it's going to be play on as it's driven straight in towards the centre. Herbert, the elusive one, is there. Goes for the handball. Filky. His kick to centre half forward. A bit of hanging on going on. Duthie flicks the ball away. Not going too far, but it's back to Duthie again. Duthie high in the air. Took that from Russell. Looks towards Kernahan. Kernahan is down. He has also got the ball. The player's getting pushed out of the way. And 12th Street getting a little bit excited. So Kernahan looking for the lead. Copping hasn't given him the greatest of targets for the day, but he'll certainly aim in that direction. That's high. Gibbs is going up, and didn't he judge that beautifully? Gibbs coming in, he rode it from behind. You watch him coming, he's got his name written right over it, right from the moment the ball is in the air. Picks his mark, up he goes, brings it down, and has got the golden opportunity to put goal number three. This should be a formality. The goal umpire says it is. Goal number three to Gibbs. And that's the 11th on the board to Glenelg. 11 goals, 8. Wester on 9-9. Nine, nine. <laughs> that's Dennis Airy. <laughs> what your guys want? That's what happens to all football players in country. <laughs> Must have been a mix with a Pekingese. Yes, he was. <laughs> My dad's a Pekingese and my dad's a bulldog. <laughs> Carey, 
with a free one, except that Des Herbert wants to uh, come against him then. Out steals McGuinness, did it well. Round the corner comes Talbot. On to Stringer, across to McGuinness, the runner. Well done, out of the square. The Bay's really working the ball in towards full forward. Where is he? He's not there this time. Gibbs the up and down, copping the one that's there. Through for one point. So the Tigers stretch their lead by that, uh, by that single score. The kick out, well, there could have been a shove, says Des Herbert. Yes, and the ironic cheers come up from the grandstand. Des Herbert in the wars in the first half. You could almost hear his bones shaking up in the stand when he was hit a couple of times. There is Micken. Stolen by Filky. By G, the centre line has played well for the Wolves. Here's Johnny Fulton. What's he doing down there? Oh, the switch has been made. Steve Miller's now at full forward. And I think that John Fulton would be at half forward. And we've played 20 minutes of the third term. The Wiedemann. Pushed down by Salisbury. The kick is high across the line. Kick to the boundary line. Here's Filky again. He's had a bag of kicks. Taken on by Salisbury. Has no fear. Faulting. In comes Morris again. 200 gamer. After him, another 200 gamer in John McFarlane. Forwards the ball to Dennis Russell. Did it well. Goes short. The kick's not good. Herbert the uh, easy market centre wing. Long. Faulting the man. Lamb. Oh, beautifully stolen. He's got a chance. If he can get around, he does just that. There's a gimme goal to Clayton Lamb, his first, and West East 10th, 10-9. They trail the Tigers, 11-9. The ball comes off the hands of Lamb. Look at the way he recovers. Then he has to do it the hard way. Gets around the players, into the open goal, the left foot, and straight through the centre. Goal number 10. Twenty-one minute mark, Micken against Carey, comes down to Grosser, ball comes out, ends up with Herbert, G's lifted, Herbert towards the full forward area, it's going over the back, that could be Miller back there to get it. Have a look at the ease in which he does it too. Try to pick up whether it's Miller or Gross or uh, Faulting. Yes, that one's Miller, I think, right? Yes, M Miller, who's now full forward, lines up, the ball is on its way, the goal umpire is also on his way, it's offline, ten behinds on the board, ten goals, ten, 70 points, five points uh, behind West Adelaide, they are behind Glenelg, 11-9, 75. The kick-off straight down the centre, should have been a free kick then to Carey, Micken got into him, the handball comes out, and it'll be West Adelaide back into attack again, it's been all Westies. Faulting, jumped out of the way, should have got the free kick. No one knows why. Simons is there, touches the ball down, looks further downfield, set a wing. And the free kick going Hamilton's way, gives the offender. And the West Adelaide supporters are static now because some of the free kicks are going their way. The kick is high, Micken can't take it. A chance for a short handball, the umpire says no. Russell, you hung on to it too long. And it's a free kick, and the free kick is going to 200-game veteran in Morris. Faulting, his kick smothered. Gee, that must have hurt. A handball to Bennett, Herbert, bumped out of the way, shot for goal up line, one point. 10 goals, 10, 70 to 11 goals, nine, and that's 75. Been playing now, 23-minute mark. And there's the replay of the incident coming up as Bennett gets it out. Herbert met solidly by McGuinness and enough to put it offline. So the kick in from Chris Duthie. Oh, beautiful kick inside the square. Oh, a huge fly. Here he is again. A springbok, Gibbs. He'll go long, a tumble punt kick. Craig Williams versus Stephen Kernahan. Short by Stringer, looking for Copping. He's down. Out comes Winter, did it beautifully. Short, beautifully directed. Hamilton with a one-hander, that was a bit casual. Picked up by Morris. The hand pass, good. The chain is to uh, Mark Micken. Into no man's land. Here's another chance for Herbert. If he can get there, Johnny Seabone will come after him quick smart. Plays the safety of the line. Falls over forwards. Up go the Westies stand again. That reckons is in the back. But to no avail. I think Dennis, that little curve in the line you can see there is drawn by Doug Thomas. 
so that gives the players a little bit more space. Or perhaps tripped over it. <laughs> Wiedemann against Carey, flicked on Seabohm. Oh, Morris with courage, got in there, well done, down to Lamb. Back comes Morris, Stringer after him. Randy Bennett gets it out. In goes Grosser, head down, tail up, working hard against McFarlane. And we'll see a bounce. Good competitive football being played at the moment. Hard, tough stuff. No, no place for the faint-hearted out there at the moment. A Wiedemann versus Carey. Oh, big tangle of players. Lamb, the attempt. Salisbury kicks it forward. Herbert still in strife. He falls forward. And again, cleared beautifully by Johnny Sebo. Out towards centre wing. Greg Summerton. Gibbs after him. Hamilton runs support. Getting in danger. Gibbs reckon have a piece of that. Greg Summerton reckons he's got the ball. And an interchange coming on. Mike Rennie for faulting. Front spot, Wiedemann. Randall Bennett. Scott Salisbury intercepts and steals. Did it well. Running support was Chris McDermott. And he'll clear. Down towards Kernahan. Williams. What a battle that's been. Well done, uh, McKinnon. Really got that hard ball. In goes Stringer. I reckon you dropped the ball. Holding, and so Stringer receives the three. The opportunity going the Bay's way. They're aiming towards Kernahan. He doesn't let them down. He hasn't really taken as many good marks today, but he certainly did very well on that occasion. You watch the champion as he moves in. Up go the hands. Perfect position. Down he came with the ball and has taken a mark. And it falls out at the last moment. Kernahan aiming to the southern goal. The direction looks pretty good as the distance there it is. It is true. That is Kernahan's first goal of the game. And another one on the board to Glenelg. West Adelaide, a point only. And you think uh, Neil Curley is giving a payout to his half back line with Kernahan, the dominant man with hands on knees. And out goes the runner to make sure that message is given quite clearly. Curly. Carey, beautiful steal. Bennett, long. Here's the man at uh, full forward is Ryan. Picked up well. Coming around is Burton. He shrugs the attack. Morris, straight through for one point. So the Wolves bouncing back. 12-9, Westies 10-11 at the 26-minute mark third term. Gee, the game certainly came to life. The kickoff. Grandstand side, Filky, punched away from Duthie, goes down, Miller trying to get it away. The pack developing a chance for Bennett, can he get there in time? He'll bend down after it, funny looking handball, vampire obscured of course, couldn't see it, it's going to be a bounce down, right on the edge of the square. Been playing now 27 minutes into the third quarter at the Richmond ground, 12-9-81 Glenelg, 10 points in front of West Adelaide, 10-11-71. Two, Gibbs the flyer. He receives, hooks the, the ball around the corner. It'll be Filky, though, that takes a finger tipper. A beautiful mark from the youngster. He'll go short inside the squares, uh, Tony Burgess. He's got a heap of room to move. Will go long. Herbert's got to stand where Angel's fear to tread. In goes Wiedemann, tries to slap it forward. Up comes Miller again. He gets a hurried kick in front of Chris Duthie. Into the goal face, beautifully shepherded through the mud. One goal. Westies now sneak a little closer. 11-11, 12-9, and three goals now to Miller. Ball coming out, Miller, the opportunist, shifted to the full forward position, comes around, it's high in the air, some good shepherding going on in the goal square. Watch it land in the mud, you can't see it, unfortunately, on that replay, but it's through, and that's all that counts. That's 11th goal. Twenty-eight minute mark. Carey going for it. Micken out reaching him. The ball coming off the bodies. Here's a chance. Picked up by Stringer. His kick is pretty wild towards that right half forward flank position. Summerton came down after it. Goes to McGuinness. Goes to Kernahan. The handball over to Simons. Simons into the open space. Could have been a free in the play there. Into the goal square. Can they touch it through? They will. And desperation stuff at the moment by both sides. 12 goals, 10, plays 11-11. We've been playing 29 minutes. Third quarter at Richmond, the short pass coming out, and West Adelaide bring it clear again. To Greg Summerton, on the half-back flank, 
He'll go short. Lamb. It's been a fiery one in this term. All players beginning to lift. Wiedemann, front spot, then back spot. In comes Jeff Morris. Desperately close to the line. Gets the hurried kick. Well done. There's the siren to enter a most entertaining third term. With the Tigers, 12 goals, 10, 82. Lead West Adelaide by five points, sitting on 11-11-77. The final quarter coming up here at Richmond, and it's only a matter of five points with Glenelg in front. They're going against the breeze. Gee, they've got to do something at the moment. Players thrown out of the way. Micken picks it up. He's got a chance to get his team into attack. Ball coming through. Still no one can break clear. Wayne Stringer picked up now. That was the new co-player that came on a short time ago. And Rennie, Rennie got it out for Herbert. He's played a Bobby Dazzler second half. Down towards the full forward area. Over the top. At the back. A chance there for Duthie. Fumbles a couple of times. Looks out wide. Is there anyone to give it to? Well, he's aimed out in that uh, half forward flank direction. A kick by Simons. Must be very close to the line. Almost marked. Comes down on the deck. Players after it, Stringer's there, just inside the line. He's just steadying things up for a moment. Looks downfield, waiting for it. A free kick will be in amongst it, and the free kick will go across his way. Grosser. Long and low. Over the top comes Lamb. A good fly. Thought highs on the ball, but it's Stringer. This is Wayne. Brother Allen playing his 50th today. Nice looking drop punt. These two players had a brilliant uh, contest. Grosser, that's, that was uh, Kernahan and Williams. And here's Herbert. Been in everything in this second half. All the kicks not good, very high. Gives everyone the opportunity. In the top was uh, Wiedemann. The front uh, was Scott Salisbury and goes wide to Snout McFarlane. Short kick, all not well directed. Here's Grosser again. That's three kicks in as many minutes. So the Rovers beginning to have a telling effect with a drop punt. He'd be looking for this man. Oh, he did it beautifully too. Great fly. New man, here he is. Fresh legs, good hands, and the catch in front of the eyes. Socks up. That adds to the accuracy, of course, of Craig Burton. The distance, 50 metres directly in front. Nice looking drop punt, goal up by doesn't move. That's his first, and Westies take the lead by one point. Take it off the clock. Three minute mark. Bounce, Carey, allowed to do it himself that time. Goes for the big punch away. Grabbed by Summerton. Gee, that was casual. McFarlane, almost as casual on that outer side of the ground, taking the mark. He looks for someone downfield, but he's finding most of his players are covered, except Kernahan. If he can manage to keep it in play, it is in play. And he's taking the mark just inside the line. So aim towards the full forward area. Copping hasn't done a great deal today. Off the hands, the kick straight across the half-back line, in towards the centre. The big fellow's there. Goes for the handball. It's on its way in towards the forward pocket. Two players there for Glenelg, if they can keep it under control, which they should be able to do. They have the handful over to... Well, with the 12th tree, got it over to his teammate there in Kernahan. Kernahan has the shot for goal and has uh, popped the tree for full points. So his first goal, that's David Kernahan. And have a look at the work that he does. Leon 12th tree, quick look. The galloper is Kernahan. This is David. One look, balances, just takes that extra step needed for that accuracy. Straight through for his first goal, and the Bays answer the challenge. Five points the difference. So, Super about to do battle with Mark Micken. Herbert lends a hand. Peter Carey's at the bottom of that heap. So is Herbert, and we'll see another bounce. Free kick. No, we won't. We'll see a free kick. Bit of dirty work at the crossroads then. So Des Herbert goes long. 
big pack of players. The discipline punch beautifully read Randall Bennett. Nobody at home. Will Scott Salisbury beat it? No, he won't, but it's only one point. So Glenelg go to 13-11, Westies 12-11. One straight kick the difference, one goal. Well, the kick off, but it's going to be taken back. The goal umpire still waving the flag. Duthie had put himself in position. So it'll go back into the uh, back line again. And the goals and Salisbury. Players well and truly covered now. It's high. Players getting set for it. Carey tried to get the ball away. Player brought down. We'll get the free kick. Thank you. And again, we'll see. Looks like Rennie out there to get the free kick. So if West Adelaide have an opportunity with the breeze, it's favouring their end. The kick is high to the goal square. Players set. Lamb got his hands to it. So did Seabalm. A kick back into the pack. No one's going anywhere except the umpire. Wiedemann down underneath, making sure the ball didn't travel any further. And it's going to be another bounce down. Only a matter of 15 metres out. Gee, look at the pack of players around the bounce. Down. Stringer works hard to get at the ball. He's supported by Johnny McFarlane. Now the interruption comes. Grosso oh, stood against the tide. Oh. And through comes Salisbury. Did it well. McGuinness. The Tigers running in lines now, charging at the ball. McKinnon and Grosso. Des Herbert has a pensive touch of the nose. So it will be Carey and Micken. The two giants have battled it out all day, and then the two youngsters have come in when necessary, and the free is given to Alan Stringer. 50th game today. As usual, his vigorous defensive self. As he goes long, oh, the flyer was Gibbs. Out comes Hamilton with the ball. Another death ball, a handball that you've got to stand under and wait. And then the hordes come at you like that one too of McGuinness. The McGarry medalist showing touches of brilliance today in a return to form, and that'll be welcomed by Coach Campbell. And Craig Williams said, nope, sledge time. And Stephen Kernahan, the one that uh, made front position. Been a terrific battle between those two. Goes long, Greg Summerton. Is the back spot, Leon 12th tree. He's been a dynamo in the last couple of minutes. Gibbs, the long kick. Johnny Cantle, after it's as safe as the rock of Gibraltar. And Kidney there. And 15 metres, and here's the kick. And watch the silly play here as Cantelaftis takes the mark. Kidney comes in, gives him the nicest shove you can ever see. And over he goes as of now there. So that meant 15 metres downfield. Corner of the square. But the Bays really putting pressure on now through Stringer. In goes Kernahan. Out comes Randy Bennett. Gets one round the year and notes the number. As uh, Filky goes along, the centre line for the Wolves have been really dominant today as Chris Duthie comes out. Blast the ball, and here's Filky again. The ball will beat him over the line, though, for a throw in at the six minute mark of the final term. And there's four points the difference. That was a nice old fist that went out there just a short time ago. Randy Bennett know all, knew all about him. So it's Micken against Carey. That's been on all day, of course, as expected. Gibbs, the pack developing. Carey jumps in over the top. And it's going to be a free kick. And the free kick is going Rennie's way. Rennie goes for the handball. Another chance, Micken. Casual looking kick towards the full forward area. Oh, Wiedemann should have taken it. Too casual. He's done that a few times today. Towards the centre of the ground. David Kernahan was in front. He can't get the ball clear. It does come out. Gibbs is there again. It's Rennie again. Out towards Ryan. McFarlane over the top of it. Herbert came through. The pack developing. It's at the half forward line for West Adelaide. And in fact, it's going nowhere at this particular stage. Four points between the sides. 13-10 to 12-12. And that's at the... around about the nine-minute mark into the final quarter. Gee, there'll be some tired legs uh, at the end of this game. All players committing themselves right now. Filky inside the square, giving ground to get the ball back towards the half forward line. The steal is on by Grossa. The support is there as well. If he can get the thing up, does so. Puts pressure to himself though as Johnny Seabone charges. Grossa is run over and will receive the free. Miller wants it on the flank. That's dangerous. He centres the ball, giving the chance to Wiedemann at the back. Can't do so. Gibbs is there. Salisbury as well. Tony Simons gets the good hand pass out to McFarlane. 
unloaded though. Carey ridden into the ground by Wiedemann and the two Giants hit the ground. The player in front, shoved. Hand pass over quickly to McGuinness. The Tigers really working very hard to punch the ball into the breeze at the back. Well done. The hand pass. Oh, oh there's a flick pass. Over the top to Kernahan. He goes short. Copping can't control it. Little kidney can. The hand pass is fine. Over to McDermott. Copping. Left foot. Goal. Well, it comes out of the setup. A chance for Kernahan to get it wide. You'll see the quick hand pass was missed. Kidney gets it. Over to the teammate. The handball's on again. Copping. Tons of experience. Didn't bother to belt the uh, ball out of the ground. Just put it through for another goal. 14. The centre bounce. Carey's uh, tap. Goes to Stringer. Yes, the bays have lifted. The lead is on. Punched away. Back in towards centre half forward again. Summerton's there. Grab when not in possession. Free kick. Right in front of the umpire. Summerton looking for leads. He decides to go straight down the centre. Over the back, a chance for Gibbs. He sidesteps well. Pretty talented sort of player. Looking for McGuinness. McGuinness stumps it on. It's down on the deck again. McDermott, that looks like getting it forward. It'll end up with McGuinness the goal. Can he make it? No. Tremendous defence at the last moment. They're looking for the free kick. A minor score only. And one point, but an individual effort there that was tremendous. So it's 14-11 playing 12-12 as we come now to the 11 and a half minute mark in the quarter. <laughs> a little kid just jumped the fence and booted the ball over the fence again, so I'd <laughs> assume he'd be a Westies fan. And back it comes again. <laughs> so the Tigers beginning to run in lines now and attack in force. And at last, Johnny Cantalaftis has got the ball back. <laughs> so, John Cantalaftis, back pocket player now electing to kick straight down the centre. That's exactly what the Wolves have got to do because this Tiger side's going to tear them apart if they use the flanks. In comes Carey. He goes wide. Tony Simons has got the chance. He's in a complete space by himself. Time to look. And go long. Copping, Kernahan, front spot. Oh, he stuck across. Beautifully done, Chris McDermott. The triumphant are holding the ball aloft and the kick comes in. And look at the, the man sneak across the front of the pack. Chris McDermott right in front of the eyes. A beautifully judged mark. Has not kicked a goal. And what value these goals at this time in the final term kicking into the breeze oh, and he's blown it for one point so 14 12 12 12 westies 11 minutes gone final term Ball's gone again peter winter straight down the center of the ground gibbs Gee, Hatton, he lifted in the second half of the game. No wonder he brought a reputation across from Western Australia with him. High in the air. Everyone with the opportunity. Copping tried to get the ball. Couldn't get it. It's in a pack again. The umpire coming in and very quickly stifling anything because he knows that it can capture light very quickly at this stage. And Winter goes back and he was rather cheeky. The bounce. 15 metres away from the goal. Desperate stuff towards the line. And it's bottled up again in that left forward pocket. Gee, it's been strange how much of the play has been in. Going towards that northern end. Well, it's Kernahan bring the ball down, has a wild snap at the goals. When I said wild, that was perhaps a little unkind. It was a little bit more controlled than that. Offline, however, and only one point. So it's 12-12 to 14-12 at this stage. Peter Winter. Carey seeks the safety of the line and does it successfully. Gathering will be Kernahan. And as usual, Craig Williams. Front spot Kernahan, the hurried kick again. 
picked up by Hamilton, kick around the corner, here they are, the two of them, Carey, use of the body is good, tried to tap it forward, is successful, Stringer from half back, now towards centre wing, long copping, no result, crowd don't like it, McGinnis right foot, I think he's done it, he's kicked his uh, first goal, Uncle Nell really applying the pressure halfway through the final turn. I think we'll see here why the crowd didn't like it. They reckon that Winner had got the mark. No, it's off the hands. McGuinness made the most of the opportunity when the hand pass came out to him and popped it through for the 15th goal to the Bays. Fifteen minute mark, Carey, can he get the tap down? He does, goes down to Kidney, dragged aside. Out of the pack, Rosser, towards centre half forward, the mark is taken, Morris. And that's not outside Morris's kicking distance, incidentally, with its breeze favouring the southern end, that's left to right. So he moves in, the distance is right into the goal square, punched away over the line, and the Tigers bottle it up in the right forward pocket. They lead at the moment, 103 points to 84, as we come to the 16-minute mark. Battle between the Giants. Comes down, a couple of hand passes. That's good defensive football then by the Bays. It could go astray now as it comes towards the centre wing. That could have almost been over on the ball, which it was. And the free kick is going to be taken by the uh, Glenelg player in Wayne in the Stringer. Down towards Kernahan, grabbed from behind, brought down. Summerton leads in the run for it. McGuinness is there, Summerton goes back after it, grabbed high, could have got the free kick. It goes to McDermott, the lead is on Copping. Gee, a little bit unlucky then. That could have been a free kick to Summerton, he copped a high one. As the ball comes through, we'll see it delivered down. Coughing, those are arms of his tucking the ball in. He's directly in front, only a matter 25 metres out. A very low kick is off direction, it's a shocker. 1.15-14, 104, 20 points in front of West, 12-12, 84. Oh, but Glenelg really putting pressure on now though. Westies will have to provide the answer to get themselves out of the fire. Johnny Candle after puts it though to goes to Carey, over to Simons, wider Gibbs. That's copping, plenty of time, short, not well directed on the last line. Here he is, the rock, and that's good 15 metres to Johnny Candle after us. The only way now home is straight down the centre. But the players don't look as if they've got the energy to do it at the moment as Hamilton goes long. The odds two to one at the back is Salisbury. Burrowing in hard, did it well. Here's Gibbs again. He's got nowhere to go except bounce. Then short. Beautifully done. Kernahan, David. Has McGuinness short. Used that player. Oh, didn't want, it, didn't want the ball uh, and it, with enough commitment. And so the Wolves get out of strife. Well done to Lamb. We'll have to go long. Wiedemann doesn't make position strongly enough. And the Glenelg defence will really pack up. Wiedemann can't run. Yes, he hasn't got the legs, I don't think. Perhaps that's fitness too, as Dennis Russell elects to go straight across goals, and Gibbs has got the Sahara Desert to work in. Two bounces, he's going in slow motion at the moment. Oh, the kick is not well directed, and it will hit Stephen Miller at centre wing. He'll get around Carey effortlessly. Will go short. Jeffrey Morris is the receiver, and he was the man that uh, kicked long here. So Morris, who's kicked two goals, one in the first, one in the second, with an opportunity to put some energy back in the legs of the players as an interchange is prepared by Coach Curley. And that's a beautiful kick from Jeffrey Morris. He has goal three, and the Wolves move that one goal closer. Off. 
Martin not coming out through the gate. Oh. It's a bounce down, 20 minute mark, a chance for Kernahan, now he's held, McKinnon. Haven't seen him for a while, kicks into the man in front and they're in trouble again, but it's some of them to get him out. So they get wide over to Filkey, Filkey very wide, out towards Grosser, not, it wasn't Grosser, it was Miller. And it's over the line, it'll be a throw in, half forward flank, out of side. Kernahan against Williams. The tap to the front, grabbed by Seabalm. Seabalm is kicked downfield, finds uh, what have found Kernahan. It's going to be David Kernahan. Play on advantage, says the umpire, as it's put in towards McGuinness. He can't get it, can and that just can. Fires the handball away, and again, in towards the centre of the ground. Filky, an opportunity to swing it wide towards the edge of the square. Players can't be for acceptance as McFarland cool behind. Gets his kick away, down towards the centre wing, and a good mark is taken there by Tolbert. No place for Wheaties at the moment. And I missed what happened. Obviously, Salisbury clashed with uh, Burton. And it went the opposite direction, and we see the, the Wolves into attack, or the Bloods into attack again. And a mark has been taken at centre-half forward and taken by Ryan. Ryan towards full forward, the lead is on, the grab is taken, and what an expensive giveaway that was by a defender, as we see the mark pulled in there by Lamb, and Lamb has kicked one goal in the game so far. David Kernahan off, and we've got, yes, we've got Murphy coming on, as Lamb lines up. And that's a bad one, that's off line, minor score, 13-13. 91 to 15, 14, 104. Yes, Coach Campbell now deciding to bring on fresh legs. And so Mike Murphy is brought in as Johnny Seabohm kicks in from fullback. He goes long, Kernahan upsets the apple cart, and it will be Williams receiving the free. Westies really now will have to kick straight and kick long and 15 meters will certainly add to that cause because Williams can kick a ball very straight over quite a distance there's Stephen Kernahan and here's Williams's kick to the goal face it makes the distance and Craig has picked up his first and a much needed one will that inject energy there's coach Curley behind those glasses very grim Seven points between the sides. Dumped on by McKinnon, who's brought down behind play. Down on the edge of the square. A chance now. Ryan over to, to Bennett. Bennett, Duthie backing his judgment beautifully, comes through. That's the luck of the game. His kick is out in the wide open spaces, out on that outer side of the ground. A chance for Filkey. He'll get away, and he does. Puts his side back into attack. Russell could get there and take the mark, or perhaps pick up the ball, which he's done. Handball's over to Duthie. Duthie, not the greatest kick in the world, goes towards the edge of the square. Players coming through, still trying to control it. It's 12-3. Goes down to McGuinness. His handball went astray. Back into the pack again. The umpire letting it go. Herbert goes after it again. It's out of the way to Seabomb. Seabomb, oh, over towards McGuinness. Put him right under the hammer. Had nowhere to go. And the umpire says... He tried to get rid of it, and it must be a bounce down right on the edge of the square. Oh, look at these tired men, too. Hands on hips, breathing like goldfish, some of them. And the bounce. Williams, Kernahan. Kernahan, decisive tap down. In there working hard, Filkey must be a free. Play on his call. Tony Simons gets it over to the running McFarlane. He's at centre wing, short, copping over his head. The hand pass long, beautifully done. McKinnon inside the square will go long, straight down the centre. A huge fly by Duthie. Can't control it. Morris can't either. 22 in there is Bradley Ryan. Seven, Dennis Russell. 36, Scotty Salisbury. 28, Grosser. Slam forward. A chance for the 
Bayes to work the ball out of defence. But Kernahan across the centre line, a comfortable mark on the chest. Wasting just that little bit of valuable time. Here's Copping against him, Winter. What a great battle that's been today. Whenever Copping's gone out to half forward, Winter's followed him or gone back to full forward and full back follows. So Williams against Kernahan. At the back is Mike Rennie, fresh on the ground this term. Hamilton, head down, tail up, working hard. The hand pass, good. Free kick. Open space, free kick. Going back to Hamilton. And G's worked hard uh, across that half back line. A complete effort. Has Micken in an unusual position loose across the half back line. The tall player should be where that one is in Kernahan to add support. Inside the square. State full forward. Goes long, wide, and a good mark to Tony Simons, talented youngster. Filky's beaten him, I believe, on the day, although Tony Simons has got a bag of kicks. He goes long. Right in front of the new man, new man that's come in, in Mike Murphy, wins a free, and his first kick. He'd be looking for the big fella in Carey. Copping, elastic arms. Faulting there, Carey, second grab, can't do it. Off hands. The Rovers there, battling at ankle level, and we'll see a bounce. Almost a free kick to uh, Kidney in amongst that then. But it's going to be a bounce down. Only 30 metres out from goal. Won't be a long quarter. Hasn't been much scored. Carey over the shoulder into the goal square. The mark has been taken. And that should just about wrap it up. As we've come up to the... Uh, almost the siren time. Murphy, the new man on, taking the mark. And that may be the luck of the game. He's getting plenty of support from his own teammates as they cluster around. It's only seven points of difference. This would make a difference of 13. So he lines up through the centre and Murphy has perhaps sealed the game for the Glenelg side. His first goal, only been on this quarter. You'll see the kick by Carey. Tried to bring the ball down, which he did. Out of the pack, the only man out there was number 12. And Murphy takes the mark. Could have played on, perhaps steadied. And that was it. 16-14-110 to 14-13-97. Seven minute mark. That's Williams against Kernahan. Grabbed by Talbot towards centre half forward. A chance 12 3. Open territory in front. Goes for the kick. It's on its way. Regardless of what it is, it's going to be valuable. It's a minor score 16 15, 111 Glenelg. West Adelaide 14 13, 97. And good coaching by Campbell. He's brought on his runners at the moment. The little blokes that can really tear around the place. Gibbs has played a good game. Herb, his. Motlop, he takes a dive for his first approach at the ball. The ball will not come out. And as the shadows really lengthen across the oval at Milner Street, the gloom really will increase for Coach Curley. He won't get uh, out of this one, I don't think. The Bays really have committed themselves well, kicking against the breeze in the final term. That's the way to do it. Run in lines and blast the ball through. There's another goal coming from the boot of Tony McGuinness. He's kicked two in this quarter, and they go their merry way in the time-on period of the final term. And you can thank 12th Tree for that one. He was the player down on the deck. The hand pass came out over to McGuinness, straight through the centre, and that seals the game. Seventeen fifteen, 117 Glenelg, 14 13, 97 West Adelaide. The ball still in the centre. Gibbs lifted remarkably in the second half. Was back after it, number two on your screen there. So it's a matter of 20 points the difference. And we're up to the 29 minute mark. It must be right on the siren because not all that many goals added in this quarter. The tap grabbed by McFarlane, oldest man on the ground. Goes out wide towards the flank. There's his co-partner in the 73 Premiership grabbing him now. Ian Carey kicks straight across the ground. I don't think that's going to do all that much damage as it goes wide towards the outer side. 
the kick by Rennie, deep down towards the flank, a chance there for Morris, he's under pressure from Russell, goes for the handball, Rennie's come right downfield, the kick is towards the goal square, Doozy's from behind, dumps it down, Bennett with a chance to pick it up, he's grabbed by Simon, thrown to the ground, and will get the free kick. So the West side will go out with a dying effort, but there won't be enough time left for them as the siren is about to sound. Yes, they just haven't committed the in the same manner as the Tigers have done today as Bennett goes high and long and a huge mass of players there. And that's Leon Grosso versus Motlop in there. Right in the teeth of goals. This is the Westies goal front. You can imagine a slamming defensive punch. That's the way it goes. Stephen Kernahan seeks the safety of the line. Bennett sneaks it though. Motlop steals. The left... Uh, footer from Motloff swings off line over the fence out of bounds on the full and Mike Rennie will be the player that will kick in the score from here would be magic twenty points the difference <laughs> the drop punt will hit the goal face a big mass of players that's got to be a Kernahan mark and a very saving one with plenty of time there's the siren, and Campbell's Tigers have done it at Milner Street this afternoon. 17 goals, 15, 117 have beaten Neil Curley's Wolves, 14, 13, 97 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10.